Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to talk about four things that I never uh, go backpacking without. Four things that are always in my backpack when I'm out there backpacking in the bush, in the bush, uh, or in the backcountry, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, so these are gonna be not necessarily like backpacking gear, but these are little things that might be overlooked. A lot of these I carry in my little ditty bag. These are super cheap things that, like I said, not uh, specific to backpacking, but have made uh, my life much easier. So number one on the list is chapstick. And I know I, I, I put this in other videos before and people are like, I don't use chapstick, I don't need chapstick. But if you've ever had chap lips and you've ever backpacked, been 20 miles away from your car and your lips are just so dry and cracking, this will keep you up at night not having uh, something uh, to put on your lips. Just a little tube of chapstick that literally weighs nothing is just so invaluable in my opinion. Now these are all, or most of these, I guess I can say all of these things are things that I've not taken on trips and really regretted. So the chapstick, that's definitely one of the first things I've noticed that, uh, especially if it's like super windy, my, my lips get like wind burnt. But this is something that will help me get a good night's sleep. I know uh, at least once a year, my lips kind of tend to get dry. So being able to put something on them at night is, is so nice that even if your lips are good, it might hit you when you're on the trail. Number two is body glide. Now, I can't really say I, I can't really say I bring this on every trip. A lot of times, if I'm just doing like a overnighter or something, I might just like apply this at the trailhead, leave my little tube here in the car. And if you're not familiar with what body glide, bloody glide. So this is for anti-chafing. This is an anti-chafe balm. Uh, this goes in some places that I won't discuss, at least in my personal experience, that's where I use it. Uh, this is something that I feel like people that are a little bit inexperienced or uh, don't do a lot of high mileage overlook. So even if you backpack and do low mileage, uh, the one day when you might, might do your first like 10 or 12 mile day, um, you're gonna wish you had something like this. I'm sure there's other anti-chafe creams on the market, but this one's nice, it's in a nice little tube. Sometimes I will throw this in my ditty bag. Uh, I don't always, like I said, I might uh, just lube up at the uh, at the trailhead and, and be good. I completely coated my body in this before I uh, did my 100 miler two weeks ago. It was fine, I didn't even have to uh, apply at all or reapply at all. I feel like once you coat it on there nice and good, it that really doesn't come off until you really like wipe it off in the shower or something. You got. Mm, you guys want to hear a really embarrassing story? <laughs> Should I say it? It's really bad. Okay, I'm gonna say it anyway. Shawnee State Forest, uh, 2020, I went there in like March. I was gonna do the 40 mile loop. There's a lot of hills, uh, not the funnest trail. It was kind of a redemption hike for me. I was gonna go do it as a one-nighter, so two 20 mile days. I opted to just not bring the body glide, and honestly, I don't know why, because most of the time, if I'm running over 13 miles, uh, I always put body glide on. Um, this time I just figured I'm walking. It's you know I hadn't been hiking hiking a lot that year, so I figure oh, I'll be fine. Whatever, my I won't be chafing that much. Uh, <laughs> well, I got to the campsite the first night and realized I was chafing pretty bad, and then the second day it hit me really hard. It really hit me hard about 10 miles uh, before I got out. So like at mile 30. And okay, here's the embarrassing part. So my butt cheeks were hurting so freaking bad at the end of this. I'm literally walking with one arm back here. Like this kind of graphic, I'm sorry, but I'm like pulling one cheek out just <laughs> to give some separation, like super uncomfortable and I'm like limping. I mean, just trying to finish this trail. And at that point, I remember thinking like, I'm glad this isn't any longer because it would just really, really be uncomfortable. I only had a few miles to go at that point. But I'm walking all all like this and my hand kept slipping off of the material in my pants. First off, I'll give you some background. I was out there during like the first COVID shutdown. It was the middle of the week. We got out of work, so it was like a Wednesday. Nobody's there. I didn't see anybody on the entire trail. So I had this real solitude feeling out there. Like I felt like nobody was there and I had been busting miles all morning. So like nobody was behind me. Nobody was gonna come up from the rear if if you catch my drift here. Long story short, pulled the pants down <laughs> a little bit, grabbed the butt cheek by the skin and just kind of pulled my butt apart walking down the trail. It's, it's embarrassing, I can't even believe I'm putting this on the internet right now. But I just grabbed that cheek and just pulled him down a little bit to where I could get a good grip and I'm just 
walking i uh, did a, probably about a mile or two like that i mean is it the best trail etiquette no but i was in pain and i innovated <laughs> <laughs> spread my cheeks is my concho number three is a uh, microfiber towel or really a snot rag this is what the main reason I bring this for, so I bring a couple of different ones of these that I like to try out um, for wiping down the inner side of my tent uh, when it's damp, a lot of moisture and stuff. Anytime anything gets wet, I have a towel. Having a towel out there is really an invaluable piece of gear. I used to bring a bandana, but these are a lot more absorbent, so I like these better. Uh, this is just a chamois cloth from like an auto store, and this is a sham wow. I actually like the cheap one better than the sham wow. It's just a little bit fluffier, so if I blow my nose with it. So if I backpack in like May, sometimes I'll get like super stuffed up uh, after being out in all the pollen and everything all day long. And there's been times when my allergies just flare up and I literally can't sleep at night. And I remember one time just not really having anything to blow my nose on except for like my shirt or maybe in one extra, like a sock or something, I don't even know, but I didn't have anything and I would have killed for just something to be able to just blow that crap out. So this goes with me on every trip. And number four, last but not least, uh, fire starters. So these are little Duraf Duraflame fire starters. I got a whole box of them. You know, I'm really big into like uh, bushcrafting and you know, I like processing wood down to start fires and I've always been into like survival and stuff and uh, honestly, it's kind of what got me into backpacking is watching like uh, Survivor Man and survival shows. So uh, back in the day, I used to I used to just bring a ferro rod and, and like find little twigs and, and make feather sticks and stuff. And uh, the more I backpack and especially the more mileage I do on days, you just get to camp and you're not feeling it like I don't feel like processing wood a lot of the time maybe I'm just getting lazy but if I'm doing like any good amount of mileage uh, in a day's time when I get to camp if I really want to have a fire uh, I depend on those fire starters so it just saves a little bit of time I mean I can always find some sticks but a lot of times you tend to fight with it a lot more if the wood uh, around your area is a little bit wet um, it can just take a lot more time and if you're depending on cooking food on your fire and stuff it just can be a hassle. So bringing a fire starter, like really, it takes up like no room. It weighs practically nothing. It's super helpful, I feel like, if you depend on having a fire. Now, if I was just going out in the woods camping and I had all day, uh, that's one thing. But we're talking about doing mileage and getting to camp sometimes like late in the evening. So fire starters pretty much come with me on about every trip I do now. The four things, four, not five. Everybody does three, three things or five top things, but those are out. Four is the new five. So four things that I never go in the woods without that are cheap and fairly useful uh, in my opinion. So that's it. Make sure you guys uh, hit that subscribe button down below if you like this video, if you want to see more stuff like this in the future. Also hit that, that little notification bell beside that. That ensures that you will get uh, alerted whenever I upload new videos like this one. Also, if you're interested, check me out on Instagram and leave a comment below with things that you bring on the trail that are cheap and highly, highly useful. I'm not talking about your tent, your sleeping bag, or your down puffy. Like those are expensive, pretty standard pieces of backpacking gear. I'm talking about little things that not everybody brings that might be unique to your backpacking kit. And yeah, I'd like to read your guys' opinions on that, but that is all for the video today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.